So before going to, to the issue of the potential expertise of economists, I'll just discuss one example. I'll just go back to the Ted Schultz example of the rational farmer to show how, to just describe how the need for expertise does emerge even in something like agriculture, or can emerge even in something like agriculture, where uh, you would think that it's the thing that people have done forever, so at least they would have a good sense of what's going on. And I will just uh, uh, describe some you know, relatively well-known uh, well uh, results, but that tells us that um, the, useful, the knowledge that is useful for the agents is not necessarily in the possession of the agents. And that's where there is potentially a role for outside advice uh, um, and for uh, subsidizing this out outside advice. Uh, other than the fact that it's, it's interesting for a history of thought per reason, uh, the fertilizer question is interesting because it's a contra it's the input use question is interesting because it's a it's a question which has divided the political uh, the politi the, the political sphere and in particular it's one of the line of div divide we're going to come back a little bit to that uh, all along this talk between uh, between our friend uh, Jeffrey Sachs and Billy Stolle. is should we subsidize for example inputs like uh, like uh, like uh, fertilizer. So in the Chicago school of poor but efficient school, you shouldn't have fertilizer subsidies because fi farmers should only use fertilizer if they find it profitable to do so. And if you subsidize it, you're go it's going to lead to overuse, which in fact is neither good for the economics nor for the environment. On the other hand, many countries have traditionally used fertilizer subsidy. And more recently, they've come back into fashion after uh, for example, Malawi reintroduced them very successfully. There was a big article in the New York Times, and they are the, a bit the cornerstone of Jeff Sachs' solution to eradicate poverty, because the soil in Africa are so poor that using fer fertilizer is essential. Using fertilizer, the choice of what input to use, in particular the choice if you say a maize farmer uh, to use fertilizer or not, is a, is a complicated question. You need to decide what to do. It's not clear that it's appropriate to your soil, what seeds to use, what fertilizer to use. All of that requires uh, a lot of uh, experimenting. But of course, if you're a farmer, in particular, if you're a poor farmer, you don't have very much chances to experiment. And if you're quite risk averse and you don't have that much money to start with, so the, the changes in, uh, in, in consumption are particularly costly to you, then you might decide that if you have a technique that sort of works, you are not willing to take uh, the, the, the gamble to try something else because even if the expected value is high, the risk is just not bearable. So you might decide not to experiment. In particular, if you have a small field so that the, val the, 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 ex the option value of a new technique is not that much. So of course, you can always copy your neighbors. And uh, there is a lot of evidence, for example, from the Green Revolution with work like uh, uh, Foster and Rosenzweig showing that people do that. But if you copy your neighbor once they have experimented, this reduces the incentive to experiment since you're free riding on your, on your neighbor's work. And in fact, Foster and Rosenzweig's work in India shows this free riding. So this is, in fact, so experimentation and innovation are inefficiently low. In the, in, and in fact, they can become so low, we saw a model earlier today, they can become so low that the uh, desire to communicate uh, sort of goes away, and even this, the experiments, the, the innovation that sort of make it into the economy don't survive because they are not diffused because before they are discussed. So in such an environment, everybody is perfectly rational, but people are far from being efficient. So we should replace, and this is the move that in a sense Stiglitz did, and then uh, uh, Banerjee and, uh, and uh, Newman helped us to sort of do is to say we should move a little bit from poor but efficient to poor but rational. And keep in mind that uh, rational doesn't always mean efficient because the fact of being poor may actually change the very, not only the, uh, the, the size of the pie, but the opportunities that you, that you have. So in this case, uh, in the environment that I just described where there is this free riding possibility, there is a need for agricultural expertise there is a reason to subsidize someone to come and to uh, work with farmers to help them experiment on their field. And in fact, if social learning has completely broken down, a big push might be necessary. 
So you might want to have a, not only one agricultural agent, but to distribute, to blanket the area with starter kits, or to have a lot of experts, like in Jeff Sachs Millennium Villages, uh, in order to put the economy on a better path, if you will. So that's an example where uh, agricultural, where, where expertise might, might come handy. But it's not, in this case, at all uh, economic expertise that's needed. What's needed is uh, agricultural expertise. So let me give you one example where I think that uh, economics could play a role, the, the, the insights that economists have. And it's another example, sorry for people who were already here today, but it's another example having to do with fertilizer and fertilizer adoption. Uh, so what we, what, we, what we saw in a, in a research work with uh, Michael Kramer and John Robinson in Kenya is that even when farmers uh, think that fertilizer is productive, even when they tell you that, yes, they think fertilizer is, is profitable, they would like to use it, uh, but they don't because they never have money at the time uh, where they need to buy it. So their first reaction is to ask you for a loan. Would you give them a loan? But then you ask and say, well, fertilizer is divisible. Why do you really need a loan? It seems you could just use a little and then progressively accumulate. So that shouldn't be a problem. But then what is, what, what is, what, uh, what they explain, what we can study, what we see is that year after year, something like that is happening. People have money after harvest. They're planning to use fertilizer. Even sometimes they save towards the purchase of fertilizer in the future. But then they, they spend more than they plan, initially plan in between harvest and planting. And then they have no money left at planting time in order to buy the fertilizer. And we go back. So, that might sound like a little bit, you know, why don't they do that? But of course, it's a very, very frequent behavior, and not only in developing countries, but also in rich countries. And that it's a procrastination behavior that's common for, for example, not saving for retirement. People don't start saving for retirement. People always delay quitting smoking. People pay for gym membership and then don't go to the gym and things like that. And it is, the, all of these behaviors are related to the same human tendency to be present past, that is to be relatively impulsive in the present and to be rational when considering the future. So in fact, uh, uh, David Lebson and colleagues have put people in MRI, and you can see that it's different part of the brain that uh, uh, illuminates when people think about an immediate reward, say an ice cream right after the, you go out of the MRI machine, versus uh, when you think, when you consider uh, getting uh, money in, in a month. So when people, so the discount rate for the immediate present is much bigger than the discount rate in the future for this reason. And this may, so this, if we take models of procrastination such as those proposed, for example, by uh, Matthew Rabin and Ted O'Donoghue, this may explain the farmer problems. At harvest time, they postpone the fertilizer purchase even if they're willing to buy fertilizer because they think that they can always do it later they put the money aside. But between harvest and planting time, when other desire or pressing need has come, and then they don't have money for the fertilizer, and money is spent differently. So if that's the case, for uh, someone who has pro problems stopping uh, quitting smoking, for someone who doesn't start uh, saving, or for a farmer who doesn't manage to get, who get who buy fertilizer, Economics decision could be improved if we manage to get people to make them today to bind another person in the future. Uh, that's not another person, it's themselves uh, in the future, to buy themselves in the future. And furthermore, if people are to some extent aware of these problems, which many evidence suggests that is the case, uh, there, could be a, there would be a demand for this type of thing, so a demand for commitment. <coughs> 